Hi, I'm Doug and this is Atomic Age Pictures and tonight we are watching Canadian Mounties versus Atomic Invaders. Now as you might guess by the name of my channel, anything with Atomic in the title I'm excited about. Now given the title of this film you might think that it's about alien invaders coming from outer space, but in fact made in 1953 this is actually a Cold War film. Uh, this involves missile bases in the North uh, Country uh, and a planned invasion of the United States through Canada. Now this film was entirely shot in the United States. Earlier scenes in the film that take place in the snow relied heavily on stock footage from earlier Republic productions and uh, snow-dressed sets from the Republic backlot. Later scenes that take place in the forest were filmed in and around the Big Bear Resort area in the San Bernardino National Forest in California. Budgeted at $172,000, this was the cheapest Republic serial of 1953. So, let's get into Canadian Mounties versus Atomic Invaders. Suppose we've got before robbers get back. Not long, but I have to hurry to make it. Get me something to kill that noise. Evening, Sergeant Roberts. Evening, Murphy. What are you doing traipsing around this time of night? Well, somebody phoned in and said there was trouble out here. You wanted to see me. Huh? Me? Well, no, there ain't no trouble around here. Must be some mistake. Maybe. Maybe somebody wanted me out of town on purpose. Be seeing you. Let's get out of here. 
That's it, all right, guy. The new ordnance map of the Tanya Quadrangle is missing. But that's a way up in Yukon territory, Don. Now, what would they want with a map way up in... Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, Commissioner Morrison. I wasn't expecting you. This is an emergency mission. We just flew in. Miss Conway, Sergeant Roberts, Corporal Sanders. How Hello, do you do, Miss Conway? Conway. Shall I see about getting the safe repaired now? Good idea, guy. What happened? Well, we had a little burglary here last night. Someone blew the safe and stole the Tanyak ordinance map. Ordinance map? It looks as though we're on the right track. Do you have a record or a log of the people in this district? Only of those I've come in contact with officially. May I see it, please? Certainly. It's in that ledger. Miss Conway has been working for us as an undercover operator in a foreign agent case. A new group of foreign agents are working in this country. In this district? We are not positive. With Miss Conway's help, we broke up their headquarters in Montreal, and we have reason to believe that some of them came out here. Do you have any names or descriptions? Names wouldn't mean anything. They change them too often. But I have seen some of them and could recognize them again. Have you had any strangers in town lately? Well, we always have a few trappers or lumberjacks coming or going, but I haven't seen any suspicious characters. Though, of course, we did have burglars here last night. Well, the theft of that ordinance map leads us to believe that some of the men we're looking for are working here. Possibly to set up secret landing fields, air bases, or supply depots. And that's our job to find out. Looks like Taniac's the place to start. Our job? Yes, Sergeant. Well, that's tough country, miss. And this time of the year, it's still snowed in and frozen solid. There is a party of settlers leaving Nadiamo next week by dog sled for the Taniac country to take up homesteads. I could pose as a farmer and go along with them, out of uniform, of course. Of course. Miss Conway could recognize some of the men we're after. It's very important that she go with you. Very well, sir. I'll arrange a plane to Nadiamo. Good. In the meantime, can you find a place for her to stay? Oh, yes, sir. There's a hotel right across the street. It's quite comfortable. Fine, thank you. Well, you two go along. I'll wait here. Very well, sir. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Hello, Smokey. Been having any more trouble with those fur thieves? Fur thieves? Oh, I don't have nothing to do with no fur thieves. No, no, I mean those you reported were robbing your traps. Oh, them. Yeah, I recollect now. No, they don't bother me no more. Is he one of your local characters? <laughs> He's a character, all right. Old Joe, a little hazy in the head, so everybody calls him Smokey. that she's here means they must have picked up my trail. So what? She didn't spot you and she doesn't know us. No, but your records will hardly stand investigation. You must go north at once and wait there for my engineers. Things won't be so good up there. I found this in the mountain safe. Settlers going into Taniac Valley. Oh, that's bad. It sure is. You're gonna have a rough time getting anything done with a bunch of farmers all over the place. Possibly they can be stopped. Yes. You two must discourage those settlers from moving in. Just how do we do that? That's for you to work out. But the job will be much easier and safer if they aren't around. Now, here are the locations. This is the cave where our planes landed the supplies last summer. And these are the two points where the rocket launching platforms are to be built. When my engineers arrive, tell them the platforms must be exactly at those places. The rockets my country have developed are accurate up to several thousand miles, if they are properly aimed. But should the launching location be wrong by only a few feet, the missiles could be miles off their target by the time they reach Detroit or Chicago. With this map, they can be spotted right on the nose. Mm-hmm. That's why I had you get it. You will find everything you need in the cave. Keep in touch with me by radio. When will the rest of the crew be up there? As soon as the ground thaws. Platforms must be finished by summer. 
Then our planes will bring in the rockets and start the bombardment of the American cities in preparation for my country's invasion force. We'll fly up the Natty Amu tomorrow. We can outfit there. Watch, watch. <laughs> prospecting back in the Taniac country. I thought we might travel with your party. Well, I'd be glad to have you. Wait a minute, Beck. Let's find out what kind of an outfit this is before we throw in with them. What do you mean? You're packing all your women and housekeeping stuff? Why, sure, we're going in to stay. And I don't want any part of it. Maybe you're right. Loaded down like that, you won't be able to make 10 miles a day. You'll never get to the river before the ice goes out, and you'll probably run out of grub before you can get back. And if you ever do get to Taniac, you'll probably starve to death trying to farm there. That's mining country. The ground's nothing but rock and gravel. But they told us it was good farmland. Well, I'm sorry, lady. They told you something that was altogether different Wait from... a minute. Wait a minute. I don't know where you got your information, but that isn't true. Are you calling me a liar? If you want to take it that way. Had enough. I guess my partner had a few too many drinks. You'll be all right now. Okay. Only if he's going along with a party, you better keep him in line. I can handle it. Sorry, Don. Had no idea we were getting you anything like this. To raise such a break as. <laughs> Start slowing down this outfit. Listen, mister, I'm guiding this bunch and all. And you took $500 from me to see that they don't get to the river in time. When do you start earning that money? I'm trying to tell you. As soon as we get to the hills, I'll swing to the north and take them into country that'll slow them down plenty. All right, but be sure it's tough enough. Mash! <laughs> Come on, Hutton. You must take it easy. This is a rough trip. Get on the sled. Yes, of course, Mrs. Warner. You should be riding on the sled. I've been telling her that, but she won't listen. Oh, those poor dogs have enough to tote. Well, the going is pretty rough, but we ought to be making camp in another hour. That's good. Mush! 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 up to something. Yeah, but what? Maybe they're wise that I'm taking them out of their way. How long before we get to the river, Mason? Oh, two or three days, if we're lucky. Yeah, 
minutes longer than we'd figured. Say, why couldn't we have kept heading east instead of swinging around to the north? It's this rocky country that slows us down. Listen, mister, I know this country, and I'm guide for this outfit. All right, all right, you're the guide. The settlers have asked me to take charge to this party and see that we don't run short of grub because of this long delay. So I'm collecting all the supplies and rationing them to everybody. Here's my grub down. And mine. I'm not sharing my food with anybody. You're with the party. Your supplies will be pooled with the rest. Don't try that, mister. Supplies. Any more arguments? No. We'll go along with you. All right, folks, it's okay. You gonna let him get away with that? Why not? The way the weather's warming up, a couple more days will start the ice moving. The kind of country I'm gonna take them through will hold them up longer than that, no matter how hard they drive. Come on, let's have a cup of coffee. Looks like we might be able to... This... This sounds like thunder. Well, it isn't. That's the ice going out on the river. We don't have to stall now. Fight! What can we do now? Nothing but head back. Why can't we go up the river until we come to solid ice? Because you'd never make it. There's no use trying. Well, I'm going to try. You folks make camp here and rest. I'm going on up the river and see how far this breakup goes. That's a good idea. May I go with you, Don? Why, sure, why not? What are his chances? Too good. This ice is just broken up here a little while ago. It's probably pretty solid up a ways. Got to be stopped somehow. Well, go ahead. You stand a good chance. He'll follow the river bank. You take that canyon to the right, cut through the first bend, and you come out ahead of him. That's all I'll need. something ahead. Keep down. He certainly has a bad disposition.
right, Kay? Fine, I think. How are the dogs? Oh, they're probably all right. Let's climb up the slope and see what it looks like from up there. Look, there's a river still frozen solid. So we can get across after all. Yeah. We sure can. Let's collect the dogs and go back to camp and get the others. Come on. Sergeant Roberts is with him. What? Are you sure? Yeah, he's pretending to be a settler. But it's a cinch he's on our trail. It'll be awfully tough getting those rocket launching platforms built with him and that bunch of farmers around here. You must get it done somehow. My country's atomic bombardment in the American cities is planned to start as soon as our planes can deliver the guided missiles. We'll try, but we'll have to do something about that Mountie. Very well. But be careful. Killing a mounted policeman might put the whole force on our trail. I know. We'll cover up somehow. I'll go back now and keep an eye on them. They'll most likely be crossing the river tomorrow. All right. Keep me informed. Yes, sir. Looks like it's all right. Sure it is. Look, you got $500 for stopping this outfit from getting into Taniac country. It looked to me like you're earning it. I'll keep trying. It's as solid as a rock. We can cross right now. Fine, let's go. Just a minute. What's the matter? That ice isn't safe. Just because it'll hold a man doesn't mean it'll carry loaded sleds. I tested that ice, and I say it's all right. We're going across. Not as long as I'm guided this outfit. As far as I'm concerned, Mason, you can quit. And that goes for me, too. I hired out as guide. You heard them, Mason. Get out. I'm not taking orders from you. Let's go. Suit us. Come on, mother. Come on, Mary. Well, folks, we've made it. Yes, we did, but that last pull was a tough one. Well, it'll be easier going now. Say, I'm going on up ahead and see if I can find some game. That's a good idea. We could sure use some meat. <laughs> Want to ride along with me, Kay? I think so. I've had enough walking for one well, day. Well, then, come along. Well, howdy, 
folks. Hello, I'm Don Roberts. This is Miss Conway. We're traveling with a party of settlers headed for Taniac. Ah, well, my name's Larson, Jed Larson. I heard you folks is coming. How are you making out? Oh, pretty well so far, but we're getting kind of low on grub. <laughs> I'm trying to do some hunting. Well, I'm afraid you won't have much luck around here. Because the wolves and wild dogs have been pretty bad this spring, and the game's about all cleaned out. But now the Indian village up the canyon are, they've got a good-sized herd of reindeer. Now, they might sell you a few head. Fine, I'll go see them. Or oh, how'll I get there? Well, uh, I'll go with you. Wait till I get my hat. Thanks. Okay, you better go back and tell the others to come on up here and make camp. I'll turn your sled around. Right. Uh, by the way, miss, you and the other ladies are welcome to use my cabin here. I've got a couple of pet bear cubs there, but don't be afraid of them. They're friendly little devils. They never cause nobody no trouble. Thank you. You're very kind. Oh, shucks. That's all right. Sure you'll be all right, Kay. Remember the way? I think so. See you later. Marsh! Ready, Mr. Larson? Yeah. You know, Mr. Roberts, it's mighty nice to have you folks up here. It gets awful lonesome. That's the reason I've got them little bear cups. <laughs> you know, they're just like two little babies. <laughs> yep, as they can be. As soon as I could. Okay. I talked to Marloff and he says to get rid of that Mountie. This old prospecting shaft ought to do the trick. Yeah, it's sure deep enough. We'll cover it with branches and snow and bring him into it. That sure is great. Yeah, we made a good deal. We'll drive part of the herd up here tomorrow. I thought you ladies was going to use my cabin. Well, we were going to, but... Oh, uh, now, come on now, miss. Don't tell me you was afraid of them two little bear cubs. No, we weren't afraid of them, but... Well, I think you better take a look at your cabin. should do it. I'll wait till you get back to camp, then I'll show myself. All right. started the avalanche. Could be. I'm going to find out.
Drop it. Take it easy, man. Why are you trailing me anyway? You must have some idea you wouldn't have shot at me. Maybe I just don't like being chased. I wasn't chasing you yesterday when you ambushed us. <laughs> Why are you trailing me anyway? You must have some idea you wouldn't have shot at me. Maybe I just don't like being chased. I wasn't chasing you yesterday when you ambushed us. <laughs> Mr. Mountie again. Oh, no. I saw him drop through that shaft. And it must be at least 100 feet deep. Well, maybe he caught himself on the edge or something. You sure? He came back to camp just before I left. 
he could have followed you here. Couldn't have followed me. Had to go out to the reindeer. I'll call him all up. Calling him. Calling him. Calling him. Calling him. Come in, Beck. I missed the Mountie again. He recognized me this time, and he probably suspects Reed, too. We'll have to lie low now. No, you must go on with your work. Where are the settlers now? They're almost here. As soon as the snow gets off the ground, they'll start staking out their homesteads and be all over the country. You must find some way of getting them out of there. We can't risk anyone finding out we're going to build rocket launching platforms. We're pretty well back in the mountains here. Maybe they won't find us. We can't take any chances. The platforms must be finished by the time our planes fly in with the guided missiles to bombard the American cities. You must keep that area clear. We'll try, but it's tough with that Mountie on the job. I know that, but my country's plans are made and they must go through. Bribe their leaders, destroy their supplies, anything, but get those farmers out of there. Yes, sir. Well, I don't know. They're short of food, but getting the reindeer will probably fix that up. And even if we stop that, they could still hunt for meat. Uh, not around here. The wolves and wild dog have driven out all the game. Yeah. Wild dogs, huh? That lead dog of mine is wild as a wolf. And being on short rations for so long, he's plenty hungry. Oh. When are they going to move the herd? Probably already started. They're going to drive him from the Indian village down to a snow corral near their camp. It's worth a try. If I can get my dog to take after those deer, he might lead the rest of the wild ones right into the herd. You go back to camp. I'll get my dog. You sure it was Beck? No question about it. He certainly went to a lot of trouble covering that shaft. Looked like he had someone helping him. Where's Reed? Well, he was here when you came back. Well, he's not here now. I wonder if he's working with Beck. It's a good bet. They were always together before Beck ran off. They could be agents from the foreign spy group we're looking for. They probably know you're a Mountie even though you're not in uniform. Probably. From now on, we have to watch Reed all the time. He's probably out looking for Beck right now. That could be. Robert! Anderson! Just a minute. I'll try to trail him when we get back from bringing in the reindeer herd. Looks as if he and his gang are trying to stop the settlers from getting through to Taniac. So a good way to bring them into the open is to help them get through. Well, men, time to go? Yep. And the Indians are building a snow corral up there in the mouth of the canyon. We'll drive the reindeer into it. We can sure use plenty more of them. <laughs> Come on, men. 
Let's go. Get those blocks in there. Hurry up now.
Thanks, Kay. It's a good thing you had that heavy parka on. He'd have torn you to pieces. Well, that's for sure. Now let's see what happened to the reindeer. Calling him. Calling him. Calling him. Come in, Beck. We made another try at running out the settlers in the Mountie, but it didn't work. This is just more of a job than two men can handle. You can't give up now. My engineers will fly in soon to start building the rocket launching platforms. All our plans have been made to start bombarding the American cities within 90 days with guided missiles. The base must be ready by then. We'll never make it here now with all the trouble we're having. Why don't you set up down south where it'll be easier working? No, it would be hard to find a place secret enough around here. Well, this place won't be secret much longer with all these settlers around. Then get rid of them. Scare them out. Destroy their supplies, anything. You've got plenty of explosives there. Use them if you have to. But drive them out. We'll try. We got most of the reindeer herd back in the corral. The Indians came back and helped us after the dogs ran off. We still lost a few, but I reckon we got enough left to last us till spring. You gonna keep them here? Seems like the best thing to do. We'll stay here in camp and butcher the deer as we need them. Then, when the snow melts, why, we locate our homesteads and get settled. Oh, fine. Well, I'm glad everything worked out all right for you. Yeah, it looks like we'll make it, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> That takes care of them. But we still haven't accomplished our own mission. No, we haven't. We still haven't found out what that foreign organization's doing up here. Beck's probably one of the gang. And that is, if there is a gang. Reed's still here. Of course, we can't prove anything against him. Although it's pretty certain he is working with Beck. Maybe you can get some information out of him. Well, it's worth trying. He's pulling out. Come on. Hey! Where do you think you're going? That's my business. Maybe it's my business, too. When did you last see Beck? Like I told you before, last time I went across the river, he told me he was pulling out for Natiamo. Then what's he doing here? He's going to change his mind. How do you know he was here if you haven't seen him? Look, you got no right to be asking me questions. Whatever I do is none of your business. This time I'm making it my business. <laughs> to move when she gets it. Marsh! Marsh and Warner, 
Help me harness my dogs. Kay, get me the gun from your sled. We've got them where we want them. Give me another gun or some shells, quick.
about a show. Give me one of yours. Haven't any. Contact Marlowe for orders. We'll have to go back. See, the cave was used as a storehouse for construction equipment and supplies. Then they must have been planning to build some kind of a base up here. Looks like it. There won't be enough left in that cave to build a doghouse now. Do you suppose they'll give up? I doubt it. From the information that Commissioner Morrison gave us, these foreign agents aren't discouraged easily. We've upset their plans, whatever they are, but I'll bet they start operating again in some other place. Mr. Robert, Mr. Kay, you people still looking for that fellow Reed? Oh, I sure am. Well, I saw him and another man heading for the river about two hours ago. They asked me if I thought the ice was still solid enough to cross on. Oh, what'd you tell them? Well, I told them I thought it would if they moved fast. Well, Don, they're our only link with the gang we're after. Hurry, we've got to catch... Let's go. to the river. I hope
hope the ice holds up. We can't just leave him here. We'll have to make a run for it. said that mail sled runs regular trips along this side of the river, so we'll keep walking until we meet it. our outfit crossing the river. Do you mind if we travel along with you? Can if you want, but there's an emergency airfield just ahead. A plane picks up the mail there every day. Will they take passengers? Sure, they just picked up a couple of men in the Tanya country this morning. Oh, what'd they look like? Well, let me see. Both were about six feet. One had a slender face with a mustache, and the other was sort of roundish. Yes, we know. Plane will take us. That'll help. They'll take you. Like to ride us? Thank you. They'll be operating around here? It's a good bet. They took another plane in Nadia Moor, and the pilot landed them in that pasture across the lake. They must have some business or contacts in this district. How are these? Oh, very good. We'll have some copies printed up and post them all over this district. Mm -hmm. If they stay around here, we might be able to pick them up. Yes, Excellency. I think the decision a wise one. Go on. Very well, Your Excellency. My country has approved the change in our plans. They agree this hill is a good location for the rocket launching platforms, and the light truck can get in there with your supplies. That's pretty wild country. Not much chance of anybody bothering us. But it's still close to town. As soon as you start flying in the rockets, we're sure to be spotted. Not necessarily. There are many planes around here, and our ship should be able to slip in and deliver the bombs without attracting too much attention. Maybe. But when you start firing those guided missiles, it won't take long for them to find out where they're coming from. It will be long enough. After we open our bombardment with those atomic missiles, every important American city will be in ruins within a few hours. And my country can force the United States to make an unconditional surrender. I suppose you know what you're doing. Where do we start? First thing is to collect the necessary material and supplies. They'll have to be bought in small quantities and in different places so as not to arouse suspicion. We can't move around too much. The Mounties know us now. I realize that. So I've arranged for other men to do the outside work. I've rented a house for you. You'll find a car there which you can use. The house is about two miles down that road. It's the Nason place. Fine. Thanks a lot. 
That was Frenchy Dupre. He says two men who look like the ones on our poster are living in the old Mason place. Maybe we've got a break. Let's hope so.
roadblocks at these points will stop them from using any of the main highways, even if they want to get out of the district, which I doubt. I doubt it, too. They seem to have transferred their project, whatever it is, from Taniac to here. Mm -hmm. One thing, that new car they're using won't be hard to spot. It's expensive, and not many people around here can afford one. Every man on the force is looking for it. Well, those wanted bulletins should help. Could be. Beck and Reed are probably small operators in this spy group. Someone else could do the outside work for them while they hit out. But could they get past the roadblocks? Yes, if they use boats. I'd better start patrolling that lake, especially at night. Get me the boat basin, please. You can't stay here with me. It's too risky. Well, it's a cinch we can't go back to the nascent place. No, of course not. There's an abandoned mine at the bottom of the hill where we're going to assemble the rocket launching platforms. You could stay there. Of course, the old kingpin. It'll be close to the platform area. And we can store the supplies there as well. Exactly. I've arranged to have the supplies assembled and brought in. One of my agents has a boat and he'll take you across the lake tonight. The sooner the better. Building those platforms with mounties on our trail isn't going to be an easy job. Our bombardment of the American cities is scheduled to start within 90 days. The basis for our guided missiles must be ready by then. You give us the men and the material. We'll make it. That's better. What did you do with the car? Parked it up a side road a couple of miles back. You'll have to go there after dark and get rid of it. There'll be another car waiting for you across the lake. An old one. Won't be so conspicuous. Well, that makes sense. You can meet the man with the boat in that cove south of Stony Point at 11 tonight. Wait here until it's time to go. Reed, after you get rid of the car, meet him there. OK. Well, how about some grub? That's a good thought. <laughs> Hello, guy. Anything new? No, sir. The roadblocks and patrols just reported in. They haven't seen any sign of the men or the car. Are you going out in the lake? Later. Give me a box of shells, will you? Yeah. Mills is standing by with a boat, but first I want to check with the land patrols on this side of the lake. Do they have radios? No, they'll use the fire patrol phones to report to you, and you can radio me. Yes, yeah, Sergeant.
Calling the mounted police post. Calling mounted police post. Mounted police post, come in, Don. I just had a run in with Reed in Burnt Canyon, but he got into their car and headed east. Alert the roadblocks. He may try to get onto the highway. Yes, sir. Where are you now? I'm still in the canyon, but I'm going down to the lake and take the boat out on patrol. I'll check with you as soon as we get underway. across the lake without lights. We'll check on it. Angle out past Stony Point, Mills. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
I saw some grenades in the stern. Use them. the lake toward the rough timber country over here. That looks like a good location for whatever they're up to. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever traps that country, and there are hardly any roads. Yeah, it looks like the kind of location they'd like. Go right over there and take a look around. Guy, get me my saddlebags, will you please? Sure. I'll only be gone a couple of days, but I'll keep in touch with you on the fire patrol phones. Now, we'll keep the search going around here. <laughs> good. Thanks. Mr. Sergeant. Oh, yes, Smokey? Well, I'd be fine if you'd catch some thieves or rob them or traps. <laughs> Last time I saw you, you told me you weren't having any trouble with them. No trouble? Well, they're stealing my furs most every day. When are you going to do something about it? All right, Smokey, I'll look into it the first chance I get. Well, why not now, today? Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. I have to go to the other side of the lake for several days. But I promise you I'll check your trap line as soon as I get back. Always promising. Well, yesterday I lost three cones and two muskets. I never have anything left. Now they just go around. that Sergeant Roberts is going over to your side of the lake, probably looking for you. You'll have to do something about it. There's not much chance of his finding us in here. But we we're going to start moving in the material for the first rocket launching platform tomorrow. That'd put us right out in the open. Of course. So you must get rid of the sergeant. Killing a Mountie can make a lot of trouble. I know, but we have little choice. Those launching platforms must be ready for us to start bombing the American cities on schedule. Roberts will be alone, so you should be able to dispose of him and his body without witnesses. Well, we'll try it. How are we going to find him? It'll be easy. You go up on Bald Peak, and I'll hide out between here and the lake. One of us is bound to see him if he comes this way.
Would you connect me with my office, please? This is Sergeant Roberts. Mounted police. Hello, guy. I'm calling from Station 7. Somebody just took a shot at me about a mile east of here. Oh? It looks like you got to the right place. Yes, I think so. But I want to be sure before we move in on them. They evidently have lookouts posted, so I'm going to hide out until after dark and then look around. Good luck, Sergeant. Thanks, guy. I still don't see how you missed him. He tricked me, I tell you. All right, don't get jumpy. So he tricked you. Call it what you want to. We don't stand a chance of bushwhacking him now. He knows someone's gunning for him. You're right about that. And what's more, he'll be searching the section and looking for us. We'll have to keep out of sight for a while. Now, we're going to need some more grub. We're going to stay holding up here very much longer. We're running low. Yeah. Yeah. And Roberts likes to eat, too. Chances are he'll go back to town tonight. And if he does, he'll have the whole place swarming with Mounties tomorrow. So what? We're safe enough. Tonight, I'll slip out and bring back enough food to last as long as they stick around.
bullet hit my cartridge case and flattened out, so all it did to me was knock me off the cliff and fortunately into the lake. You were lucky. You know, they probably think they killed you. That's what I'm hoping. Might bring them out into the open so we can pick them up. Then you're going back over there on patrol? Yes. I left my horse out and back so I can get out of town without anybody noticing me. But I need your help. Of course. What can I do? I want a car over on the other side in case they try to run out on me again. But I don't want one of our own machines, which they'd recognize. So you go over to Len Curtis's store and ask him if we can borrow that old station wagon of his that he makes deliveries with. Where will I meet you? Drive down the telephone line road to number seven station and wait for me there. Oh, by the way, lock the door when you go out, will you please? just saw Sergeant Roberts. But you couldn't have. I got him. You didn't get him. He just rode out of town. But I... We've got to get those rocket launching platforms started or my country won't be able to fire guided missiles across the American border in time for the attack. I understand that, but... So I'm sending in a truckload of cement and one of explosives this morning. If they get through, take them to the site and start pouring concrete. Nobody's likely to find you there. That's okay. But sending the trucks in is dangerous. How long will it take? The cement is loaded and waiting for you down the highway. You can finish the job in a few hours. I'll send the explosives along a little later. All right. We'll get the trucks unloaded as fast as we can and have somebody drive them out of here. Very well. Let's pick up the cement truck. We'll bring Mac in with us and let him drive it back. Where's your boyfriend? Get in the truck. I'll ride back, get going. How about the mountain? Probably around somewhere, so keep your eyes open. Right.
looks like everything's under control. Well, good going, Kay. You drive the truck down the road to where you can turn around and we'll take him back to the station wagon. I'll ride along behind you and keep an eye on him. Right. you luck. Thanks. So I don't know what happened after that, but it didn't look good for Beck. What about that truckload of explosives? I had it started an hour ago. Hadn't it showed up? I haven't seen it. Well, keep watching for it. Get it unloaded and send that truck out of there as fast as you can. Yes, sir.
What do we do now? That'll be up to Marloff. Calling him. Calling him. Calling him. Come in, Beck. I got away from the mountain. You don't have to tell me. The story's all over town. You lost the explosives, too. Now we have nothing to work with. That's about it. We'll just have to wait until it's safe to bring some more stuff in. We don't have time to wait. We must finish those rocket launching platforms in time for the scheduled bombardment of the American cities. But you can't even start a platform base on the number one site without cement. And we've got to have explosives to level off the rocks on the other site. I know. Well, we can't risk sending trucks now. But we could take over enough explosives by boat to start work on number two site. Where will you get any explosives around here? It's a small matter of a purchase permit. Yes. I think I can fix that. Walk over to Ben's cabin, get his pickup truck, and come here as fast as you can. Bring Reed with you. Be right there. Thieves. No, sir, not me. Well, suit yourself. What can I do for you? You can quit stalling and do something about them fur thieves that's robbing my tracks. Well, look, Smokey, I'm not you stalling. You keep I... promising you'll look for them, but you never do nothing about it. All right, Smokey. I'll ride out and look over your trap line. Well, I want more than that. I want you to catch them thieves. We'll do the best we can. I know the sergeant rode out on my trap line, so you'll have plenty of time to find the purchase permit before he gets back. I hope you're right. Let's hope it does the job. Who did it? and Beck filled it out. You all right? Yeah. There are only a few places around town they can buy explosives. I'll go check on them. All right. We want a boat to haul some stuff across the lake. I usually just rent the pleasure parties. What's the difference? We can pay your price. That enough? Sure, that's plenty. I'll fill out a rental contract and get a sign. Which boat do we take? We'll start loading. We're in a hurry. One on the outside. Okay. Police office. Don, hurry up. There's a phone call for 
for you. It's Ed Peters. Two men are loading explosives into a boat at his dock. Hello? Hello? Sergeant Roberts? Somebody shot him. Push your gun down. All right, now move over. Come on. Be the mounted police office, please. Okay? I've caught him. Send the squad car down here as fast as you can. I'll be here in a minute.
right, but so did the Mountie. Mm, that makes it bad. Bad? Now he'll come looking for me to tell me there's nothing wrong on my trap line. And his lad will be suspicious about my sending him out of town just before you broke into his office. We better get out of here pretty quick, then. Yes, but first we'll set a trap for him if he does come prowling around here. Beck, you go up in the knoll and keep watch. You stay here and help me. I've got a bear trap here that's just the thing. We have all our reports, Commissioner Morrison, but perhaps it'd be better if I tell you the story. Suppose you start at the beginning and review the whole case for me. Very well, sir. Check me, Kay, in case I forget anything. We met Beck and Reed for the first time when we went to talk over our plans with some of the settlers in Nadiumo. Well, Mama. Oh, hello, fellas. You headed inland, too? Yeah. We figured to do some prospecting back in the Taniac country. I thought we might travel with your party. Oh, I'd be glad to have you. Wait a minute, Beck. Let's find out what kind of an outfit this is before we throw in with them. What do you mean? You packing all your women and housekeeping stuff? Why, sure, we're going in to stay. And I don't want any part of it. Maybe you're right. Loaded down like that, you won't be able to make 10 miles a day. You'll never get to the river before the ice goes out, and you'll probably run out of grub before you can get back. And if you ever do get to Taniac, you'll probably starve to death trying to farm there. That's mining country. The ground's nothing but rock and gravel. But they told us it was good farmland. Well, I'm sorry, lady. They told you something that was altogether different Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know where you got your information, but that isn't true. Are you calling me a liar? If you want to take it that way. He's had enough. I guess my partner had a few too many drinks. You'll be all right now. Okay. Only if he's going along with a party, you better keep him in line. I can handle him. Are Beck and Reed the same two men who are causing all the trouble here now? Yes, sir. We couldn't pin anything on them at the time, but we have reason to believe they did everything they could to discourage the settlers and make them give up and turn back. I'm sure the guide was working with them. I'm sure, too, sir. He led us to a place on the river where the ice had already gone out. What can we do now? Nothing but head back. Why can't we go up the river until we come to solid ice? Because you'd never make it. There's no use trying. Well, I'm going to try. You folks make camp here and rest. I'm going on up the river and see how far this breakup goes. That's a good idea. May I go with you, Don? Why, sure, why not? What are his chances? Too good. This ice is just broken up here a little while ago. It's probably pretty solid up a ways. He's got to be stopped somehow. Well, go ahead. You stand a good chance. He'll follow the river bank. You take that canyon to the right, cut through the first bend, and you come out ahead of him. That's all I'll need. see something ahead. Keep down.
he pulled out. We might as well get going. You hang on to that rifle. That fellow looks like he means business. Do you think whoever it was knew who he was shooting at? If he doesn't, he certainly has a bad disposition. Push! <laughs> see the man who tried to kill us, but from what happened later, I'm sure it was Beck. In your previous report to me, you said that the material they had stored in their cave indicated they were planning some sort of construction work. Have you any idea what kind? We can only guess. It looked like a warehouse or a storage depot. But it's hard to see why they'd want anything like that away up in the Taniac district. Well, they must be planning the same kind of construction somewhere around here. Someone must be buying those supplies for them. Have you tried from that angle? Yes, sir, but we haven't found out anything definite yet. But there's an old trapper who hangs around here and pretends to be half-witted. I'm beginning to suspect he might be a contact man for them. Have you seen him with them? No, but this old trapper is Smokey Joe. He moved in here about the time the trouble started. He's always hanging around and asking questions. And then yesterday, he sent me off on a wild goose chase just before they broke in here and stole the explosives purchase forms. He might be worth investigating. I intend to search his cabin just as soon as we're finished, sir. Well, why don't you go now? We need all the information we can get. Very well, sir. It'll only take an hour or two. Take Miss Conway with you. There may be someone around whom she can recognize from her contacts with the gang in the East. Of course. Trip wire ready? Yeah, it's all set. Come on, we have to get out of here. You stay here until I see what's doing. If I need you, I'll fire a shot, and then you can come on in. All right.
shooting at? I don't know. We'd better find out. Get those clamps off the wall and we can open this trap. Hey, she's getting them loose. We better move in on them. No. His office must know they came here. And Commissioner Morrison is there. If we shoot them, he'd have the whole force out looking for us. I can bluff him out of this. Find Beck and stand by. I'll need you later. <clears throat> What you doing messing around here? Look what you done to my bear trap. What's the idea of setting a booby trap like this? Well, this is my place, ain't it? I gotta protect it. I always set traps for varmints and nosy snoopers like you. I'm not just snooping, Smokey. It's my job to keep track of what goes on in this district. And I've good reason to believe you're working for a foreign government. Foreign government? Well, I don't know nothing about no foreign government. Ain't nothing around here nobody'd want anyhow. Maybe not, but I'm gonna search your cabin. Oh, well, you won't find no boot like liquor in there, Mr. Sergeant. I'm gonna search it just the same. Well, I won't search my cabin. I don't drink anything. Here, Smokey. No, I don't rightly remember, Miss, but seems like quite a long spell. Where'd you come from? Oh, lots of places. Yeah, so many places I couldn't recollect half of them. Smokey, I guess you're in the clear. Only watch your step. You better watch yours. Tay me goes around walking in bear traps. <laughs> it's a good joke. <laughs> yeah. So there's nothing I can fit on him now, but I'm still suspicious of him. I am too, Commissioner Morrison. There's something about him. I think it's his eyes that make me think I've seen him someplace. Could he have been at that foreign organization we were after in the East? Oh, I don't know. He might have been. I can't place him. We have fingerprints of all that gang at headquarters. You have any prints of Smokey Joe? No, sir, but I can easily get them. I think we could pay to check on it. Very well, sir. I fooled the Mountie all right, but I'm afraid of Miss Conway. She knew me in the East, and she kept looking at me as though she almost recognized me. I'll have to leave here and go up to the mine with you. You'll be safe there. Yes, but someone will have to arrange for the supplies. How much more do you need? Well, I, I guess we could manage to build the one platform base up in the rocks with the stuff we already have. But we'll need cement, more lumber and steel to even start the other one. Then we'll have to settle for just one platform. But even so, if we mounted on swivels, we should be able to launch enough guided atomic missiles to destroy the American cities. How about your stuff here? Well, I'll have to take my papers and the radio. I must keep in contact with my country. Here, get my car. It's on that side road behind the hill. Beck and I will have everything packed and ready by the time you get back. Get a box. Find a pair of 
your guns and be careful about it. Now move over here. Cabin, but they got away from me in a black sedan and are headed east. Call the highway patrol and have them put up roadblocks. I'll cut over to the lake road and be ready for them if the roadblocks turn them back.
course, Your Excellency. I realize the importance of completing our project on time, and with the help you plan to send us, I'm confident it can be done. I'll keep you informed. The Mounties must have got all your notes and blueprints from the shack. When they find out we're building rocket launching platforms, they'll know what to look for. We haven't got a chance of finishing the job now. We can finish one platform if we work fast enough. My country's sending in two construction experts to help us. When will that happen? Sometime today. You can go to work now, and I'll send them out to you as soon as they get here. All right. But what if the Mounties spot us? What then? Come back here. I'm going to set a trap in the mine entrance that'll blast anybody who tries to come in after us. Well, we know what to look for now. Their rocket launching platforms ought to be easy to spot from the air. Of course. I'll assign planes for the search at once. Oh, Commissioner, we know they must be working somewhere in this district, probably across the lake. Our post patrols around here and be ready to move in at once if our planes spot anything suspicious. Good. Get me headquarters. Yes, sir. Okay, that'll hoist the heavy stuff. Hello, this is Sergeant Roberts. Would you please connect me with the modern police office? Mounted police. Hello, Kay. I'm calling from Station 7. Anything new yet? Yes, one of the planes just reported. Four men are working on some kind of a construction on top of a rocky knoll. Let me see. Map coordinates 173W. 173W. 173 West. And 36N. 36N. 36 North. All right, we'll check on it. Right. Here it is. About three miles northeast of here. Swell, let's go. Must be on top of that knoll. We better walk from here.
say that was a little close. You're right. Let's see what we've got. Well, where do we take him? The hospital or the morgue? The morgue. First two went east. Back went up the slope. Let's see if we can pick up his trail. We'll send for him later. Connects to explosives. What happened? Reed's dead, and the construction men ran away. Did the Mounties follow you? I didn't see them, but they might trail me. Anyway, we're washed up now. We'd better get out of here quick. No way. If they didn't follow you, we're perfectly safe. But if they do find the mine, this trap will take care of them. Cover that up. The old Kingpin Mine. That would make a good hideout. You know, it could be a tough job getting in there if they decide to put up a fight. Yes, if we charge right in. Say, there's a shaft at the top of the entrance that leads up to a small tunnel on a higher level. If I could reach that, I could drop right into the mine behind them. Come on, let's get a smoke screen going. Right here. followed you, they'd be here by now. I believe we're safe. The Mountie trailed me. Must be figuring to smoke us out. That won't work. If they try to charge us through the smoke, they'll hit the tripwire. That looks good enough. You stand by here. Yes, Sergeant.
Baby Joe turned out to be Marloff, the famous foreign agent. Infamous would be more appropriate. He was probably the most dangerous man in this country, and he almost succeeded in destroying it. It's fantastic how so few men could expect to destroy two countries as powerful as the United States and Canada. They were only the spearhead of the invasion. This foreign country, and we can make a pretty good guess which one it is, hoped to do so much damage with their guided missiles that their occupying forces could land with very little opposition. And we thought that Smokey Joe was just a poor old halfwit. In a sense, he was. He and anyone who thinks our free countries can be occupied, as you put it, Commissioner, with very little opposition. Sergeant? Commissioner? 